Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm talking about module 4 of the Sentinel Lab Guide. I'm following along a public guide that, that you can also do it on your own trial tenant. So if you're keen to do that, check out the description for more information. In module 4, I'm covering incident management. Let's dive in. Okay, so next module, module 4, is all about incident management. So let's first of all go back to the main screen of Sentinel. From the top screen, where we need to go in order to access incidents is threat management and incidents. Let's navigate there. By default, you'll be greeted with incidents for the past 24 hours. Okay, so it's very important here at the top that you modify the time uh, of which, you, which you're looking for incidents, right? So this is default last 24 hours. If there have been no movements in 24 hours, you're gonna see zero here. That's why it's important that you understand how to modify and change this range here. In my demo, demo tenant, I have incidents for the past seven years. That's what I changed to, and that's where I can see my incidents. And very important, at the top here, you can also see the status of these incidents. So these are open incidents, as you can see here. Uh, but there, there are also new incidents that I have not yet changed the, their status. And there are active, active incidents as well, being actively worked on by someone. Now, what the, this means, this status means is when we click on each one of these incidents, we get this blade here on the right hand corner, which we have the status information from the incident. And we can manage the owner of the incident, who is taking care of that incident. That is your SOC analyst, potentially who's assigned to analyzing that incident. We also have the status the progress status of that incident investigation. So as you can see here at the top, we have new incidents that have just been created. And then we have active incidents and potentially closed incidents as well, as you can see on top the pop up um, options. And we have the severity as well. By default, every incident will have a severity given by Sentinel and you can modify that should you need to. Now, Talking a little bit more about this blade on the right hand side here, these are just this is just a summary of some information from this incident based on a description of the incident from Sentinel, sources, alerts that are coming in, uh, being correlated into this incident, related evidence, entities, and so on and so forth. This is not the actual page where an analyst is going to hunt or investigate uh, for evidence and indications of compromise or th behavior threat analysis. This is not it, right? So for this, we have a couple things, right? So we can view full details for that particular um, incident. But if we want to navigate to these incident lists through a different way, there there is what we call Sentinel workbooks. So for Navigating incidents, there's two ways for us to access the same security efficient workbook um, that is very helpful for analysts. First is here at the top. We have the this link to the security efficiency workbook. And also every incident will have this section called incident workbook here. So these are the two options that you can access this incident workbook for you as an analyst to work through and analyze all the incidents in your list. For the next step, we want to look at how to handle incident management. So for example, let's take a look at this particular generated incident called sign in IPs that attempt sign ins to disabled accounts. Now, again, I clicked on it. I get the blade here, the summary. I can assign this to myself. Let me go ahead and do this. I can also change the status of this incident to active because I'm actively working on it. The next step for me is to try and learn more details about it. So let's view full details for this particular incident. So just as this finished loading, what, what we can see is a better and more focused view on the alerts that generated this incident and the entities and relative evidence to this incident particularly here on the left-hand side. Now, 
where do you get started? How do you start hunting and investigating this? Ideally, you'll look at the incident timeline. This is where we organize all different alerts and sequence of actions that led to this incident. So you get a picture from when the initial alert related to this incident was raised in our platforms and where you could get started to learn more about related people, related entities, and so on and so forth. And you can see the, all the list of alerts in this timeline as well. So what, what, what I want to do next is look at this particular alert here. And what I want to do in this particular alert, and notice how the status for this alert is new. So the alert itself is not the incident. There are layers to the incident. The incident is a correlation of different alerts. An incident is high fidelity, meaning that there is a very high likelihood that this particular aggregation of alerts is important to your investigation. This is why we're ag aggregating them. But let's take a look at this particular initial alert. Let's click on link to LA. Now we're taken to the logs analysis of this particular quer query that generated this alert. The query here at the top is what creates the particular alert that we're looking at. And the bottom here is the results of the, the query that found those results for us. Now, if I expand these results, I can see more details about this alert. So what is the IP address related to that alert? That is important information that I might want to stick around and look at. There is also the disabled account that someone is attempting to log into, right? So I know that John S, for example, is the account that someone's attempting to log in. And I know that the successful account sign in is coming from Adele, right? So there is very important information that is coming here. What we might want to do next is to understand more a bit this IP address, right? So get the context behind it. So let's go ahead and copy that. Right click, copy it. Click on done to close down this tab. The next step in our investigation is to look further from in our environment against this IP address. How do we find out whether there have been other connections to this IP address in our entire environment. For us to do that, we have to look into our Investigation Insights workbook. So let's head over to that workbook. For us to do that, let me close down this, in this particular incident view. And what I want to do next is go to Workbooks on the left-hand side. And then we have all access to templates that we can onboard to our environment. But ultimately, I want to look at this one that has already been added to my environment called Investigation Insights. Let me go ahead and click on View Saved Workbook. So I'm presented with incidents for a few days and so on and so forth. Now, it's important. The first thing we do is to confirm that we're looking at the right subscription, the correct Sentinel workspace that we're investigating. In my example, I need to change this to a different value. There we go. Now this is going to show me relevant statistics from this particular environment. In here, I know and I get to see here that this is in fact um, where I was just looking at this particular incident there. As I scroll down to the bottom, I can see the Entity Insights section. And the ent Entities Insights is where I can essentially load you specific URLs or account names, host names, and query that against uh, multiple uh, tables in my environment. For example, I've loaded the IP address that we're investigating and it has run that uh, IP address against different tables, including the accounts active from IP, Azure Acti Active Directory sign in, Office Activity, and even Azure Activity. So it qu query them against this very different databases and it returned to me different results. So I can easily see that uh, this particular user has a lot of activity related to this particular IP address. So one thing we can do at this point would be to understand details from this user, right? So who is this user? We could reach out to different teams internally and understand if this person should be having uh, this kind of connectivity in an environment in our demonstration scenario. This user is part of Red Team, so they uh, essentially provide pen testing services to to the 
organization. So uh, the SOC manager could instruct us to actually whitelist this user so as to not raise alerts whenever there's activity coming in from them, right? So if we're whitelisting a user for whatever reason, including this, we can go back to the incident and perform these actions. Let's go ahead and do that. So then in, the, in our scenario, let's navigate back to that incident. IP address, this is it. So what I can do here is knowing that this is a benign positive. So we know that it's the correct, uh, there is an alert, but for the time being, the SOC manager wants to whitelist this because it's an ongoing red team exercise in our environment. So we don't want to waste time analyzing and investigating similar alerts in the future for a period of time. So what we can do is create it, an automation rule that is assigned to this particular incident. So I could click on actions and set that up right from that pane. But what I wanted to show you is the incident actions. So when we click on incident actions, we can create an automation rule. So what I want to do in this automation rule is essentially state that when this incident is created and it contains this particular name, sign ins IPs that attempt to disable accounts coming from this particular IP address, we might set up the actions to closed with a benign positive status, right? So it's suspicious, but it, ex it is expected. We can also add a comment here to further explain why this is it. There you go. And we know that this particular exercise is happening for a specific amount of time. That's good to know because this automation rule can have a rule expiration. So what we want to set it to is to expire at the set time and date. That's exactly what I've done here and I can apply this. So it should take a few seconds for it to accept the creation of that automation rule. But then we know that from that point onwards, any new incidents that come in with that IP address and that name are going to be automatically closed. So what's left for us to do is to close this particular active incident. So we come into the incident status page and we can set the status to closed and we can choose the classification, which we know is benign positive, suspicious but expected, and I can enter whatever comment I need. After a few seconds of application, it's, it's going to take effect and it's going to get um, taken down from the list of open incidents. So hopefully you found this module helpful. I sure did. It's been a packed one. So we covered incident man management basics like covering the states, understanding the entity's relationship, understanding how to navigate through alerts, how to query potential alerts through the log analytics, also how to raise uh, indication indicators of compromise that are part of alerts, Hopefully you found this informative. If you did, make sure to subscribe and like the video. All right, see you in the next session.